Hey, hello. So I'm back and now I'm going to explain how to work with the slots for the wearable. So I'm going to open here the Material Builder tab on the Yuma toolbar. And I'm going to expand this uh, over the other windows. So I will just drag everything here so I can use the entire uh, resolution. So you can see here. Uh, we have um, an area for the slots. These, those are the four data that we need to provide. So the race prefabs kinet mesh render is actually from the unified uh, 3D model. And we have the separated elements, so we can actually drag those here, and uh, the rest will be filled. And, uh, here we are going to use the sample material as we usually use. And I'm going to set here the, the folder for receiving those slots. In this case, I have the slots folder. So this is the one. And automatically the, the elements name, in this case the slot name, was already generated after dragging the, the meshes to the area. So after it's processed, you will see the message and the generated files. So you have the actual slot assets and the data from the bones that it was provided through the, the unified mesh itself and the UMA data there. So now we can actually drag other elements as a phase and uh, the same will happen here. For each of them. I had to accelerate this process so I could save some time on the video, but we can see here that both the teeth and claws has also been included and generated, and each of those slots is now on its own folders. So now uh, I will start working with the overlays. So the process here is quite similar. We have a set of three textures that will be included on the material builder and those will generate the overlays. Uh, in this case, I've dragged the textures and based on the naming convention, they were already included on the right spots on the, on the setup. And I'm also dragging here the folder for the overlays. And uh, this usually takes some time, so I just skipped the calculation. Also remembering all textures, uh, it's a good idea to keep them on the highest quality possible. And here is the resulting uh, overlay. So I'm going to create a specific folder for this overlay and drag in the, the information. So we have the overlay data and the textures that are had been generated. So we have the diffuse and the mask and here the normal map included with the specular and gloss. So three textures actually become uh, two textures. Um, so the same can be done now with the other elements, the other textures. So I'm basically uh, creating the folders and naming them so I can save some time later uh, because Different than the slots, the folders are not actually generated in the process, so this is a similar necessary step. Same way as with slots, I'm not going to cover all the overlays here, but uh, the, the process is identical, so I will skip this to save some time on the video. So here we have all the overlays done. And now what I'm going to do is to actually drag those overlays to the library so that they can actually be used by the, the project and uh, when generating the, the final rafters. So after including all of them, I will just order them and update the list of the library. And this is also very important. I'm going to apply the the configurations for compressing 
and uh, setting up the textures, textures on the overlays to read and write. Uh, this is necessary if you're not using Unity Pro. So as uh, soon as this is finished, all the textures on this library have been uh, com compressed and now have the read and write setup. Uh, so now also this is uh, important. I'm also going to select those textures and I'm going to reduce the maximum size uh, for all of them. And after adjusting this specifically uh, for the 1K value, that usually, usually is the value for body and head, I will manually adjust those values specifically for the claws and teeth and other uh, elements. The final value, it's, uh, it will depend on uh, the the specific situation of your project, what is uh, vi visualized from a specific distance, but uh, I will usually keep those uh, smaller so they don't spend much of the space on the atlas as each of them is included on the final atlas. Here I'm looking for the eye overlay as I've managed to keep the same eye a mesh for both the werewolf and the other models so you can naturally use the same eyes and the same eye textures for all of them so I'll just get those back so you can actually have different colors for the werewolf eyes and here I'll take a look that I have all the overlays and the slots everything is here and the uh, race elements as well. So I have the prefab and the race itself. Its name was renamed to Werewolf Mail. And uh, we have here the library, we have the overlays, we have here the race, and the slots as well. So it's important to have all of those elements, including the random pool with the one random set element from the werewolf and right now this element is clean and I'll uh, start including the first one uh, keep an eye on the name of the of the race it's werewolf male and what I'm going to create for the first the initial test is actually the eyes because this is the probably the fastest one to test and see if it's working so I will include uh, the eyes slot here and here I'll include a possible overlay that those eyes will use. In this case, every eye slot will necessarily use the eye overlay. And uh, if I hit play, you will notice that we will already have all of the eyes for each of the avatars. All of them are black because of the color set here on the color. So in this case, I will keep it white because I don't want any influence from any random values. I want the original color from the texture, the overlay itself. And you can see here, if I right click and change the sliders, the DNA values are already influencing the, the final results. So I will include here uh, a different overlay. So keep an eye on this because there's a difference between an extra overlay and including a possible different overlay. So this is the difference between the, the different uh, plus icons. So here I'm including the edges overlay with a random color and this will generate the different eye colors but uh, avoiding uh, applying the, the color for the entire uh, eye so as you can see here it's working quite well okay so the next element i'm going to create is an extra slot 
In this case, I'm going to include the face, the head itself. So this is the name of the slot. And I'm going to include here the werewolf head. Um, so this is the name of the overlay, as you can see uh, here. So this is the one I'm using. And here is something interesting. The skin, you can see that I set both values to black here, and I'm using the type skin. This will guarantee me that I will uh, have a random value for the skin of each of those uh, heads, and that the same value will be shared with other slots, like the rest of the torso, arms, and so on. So the skin color is shared between different slots. So now I'm going to include another slot. Uh, in this case, let's include here the torso. And uh, instead of head, it's the body overlay. And as you can see, I'm going to use the same uh, skin values here. And uh, as you can see, I have the same uh, color for both the head and the rest of the torso. And of course, you can also test the sliders and see how they behave now. Next one, uh, probably I will try the legs, because then I can actually see the rest of the, the integration. That's one that is worth testing now. So let me include the legs. And this is also interesting, because it also uses the body uh, overlay. So this is a tricky part. I need to count here the number of, uh, over, uh, of slots. So 0, 1, 2. So uh, the, the overlay uh, is the same as the slot number 2. Uh, don't forget starting counting from 0. So the same overlay will be shared between both uh, the legs and the body. As you can see here. And now I will add another um, slot here, and of course the overlay. In this case, the feet, and uh, so feet. And in this case, I'm not going to share this texture with other elements. So I'll get back to zero here. And this one is interesting because it uses an overlay that is shared between the hands and the feet. So when we add the hands, we need to keep an eye on this uh, index here. So you can see that the feet is already included. And uh, the rest of the process is basically the same as we've discussed so far. So I will actually stop this video on this specific point and the next one I will already uh, start with the entire random set completed. So that's it for now. See you guys. Goodbye.